During the Battle of Yellow Tavern, Virginia, Private Cyrus McCormick of the 6th Virginia Cavalry was one of Jeb Stuart's couriers. During the heat of the battle on May 11, 1864, young McCormick witnessed the mortal wounding of the great cavalry chieftain. On the morning of the fight at Yellow Tavern, I was acting as one of Stuart's couriers. At the beginning of it, I was stationed in front of the tavern under one of a row of trees that lined the way close by. To my left, about 400 yards off, the enemy could be easily seen emerging from a piece of woods and forming for battle. A short distance to my right, I saw an irregular line of Confederates. Pretty soon, from the enemy came lively volleys whistling through the trees and starting the dust in the road. In a few minutes, I saw two horsemen approach from the Confederate side. As they drew near, I recognized General Stuart and Colonel Walter Hullion. They halted nearby in the road, and Stuart, taking out his field glass, deliberately watched the maneuvers of the enemy, though balls were whizzing past him. Presently, regardless of the increasing fire, which was now accompanied with shouts, Stuart put his glass away, and taking out paper and pencil, wrote an order. Handing it to Colonel Hullion, he told him to take it to General Lomax. That officer replied by pointing to me and suggesting that I should carry it. Stuart assented and I rode off in search of General Lomax. The firing continued to increase and many squadrons were in sight. The enemy, awake to their superior numbers, seemed about to make a general advance when our men were availing themselves of the character of the ground to repel their attack. I soon came to where General Lomax was and coming into collision with his horse, gained his immediate attention. After reading the note, he told me to go back and tell General Stewart that the order had been delivered. In a few moments, I rejoined Stewart. He was sitting on his horse, close behind a line of dismounted men, who were firing at the advancing Federals. The disparity of numbers between the opposing forces was very great, to judge from appearances. Our men seemed aware of their inferior strength, but were not dismayed. The enemy confidently pressed forward with exult shouts, delivering tremendous volleys. The Confederates returned their fire with yells of defiance. Stuart, with pistol in hand, shot over the heads of the troops, while, with words of cheer, he encouraged them. He kept saying, steady men, steady. Presently, he reeled in his saddle. He turned and said as I drew near, go and tell General Lee and Dr. Fontaine to come here. I wheeled at once and went as fast as I could to do his bidding. Coming to the part of the line where General Lomax was, I told him Stuart was hurt and that he wanted General Fitz Lee. He pointed to the left and told me to hurry. Soon I found General Lee and delivered the message, and instantly upon receipt of the news, went like an arrow down the line. When I returned, Stuart had been taken from his horse and was being carried by his men off the field. I saw him put in an ambulance, and I followed it close behind. He lay without speaking as it went along, but kept shaking his head with an expression of the deepest disappointment. He died the next day, May 12th. General Stewart died of his wounds on May 12, 1864. Private McCormick survived the war and later went on to write about his experiences in the Confederate veteran paper, Southern Bivouac, 
some 20 years later in 1884, 